would you do if your man of eight years did nothing but lie to you, cheat on you, and deny being the father of your child? Well, on today's case, Ms. Janik says that's the unfortunate and heartbreaking reality she's been living in when it comes to her partner, Mr. Spurgeon. She says his infidelity, failure to provide, and his denial of their two-year-old daughter have her at her breaking point. And she says he either needs to step up or get out. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Janik versus Spurgeon. Thank you very much, Ms. Janik, Mr. Spurgeon. Ms. Janik, you say you are tired of being betrayed and feeling alone in this relationship. You say you are ready to take your two children and move on with your life. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Spurgeon, you say you are not ready to end your relationship. You are hoping today you and Ms. Janik can resolve your issues here in the courtroom. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Janik, you have brought this case today after what you say are years of not being happy. You've been together for eight years, you've lived together for seven years, and you have two children together, although the paternity of your two-year-old is one of the questions. Tell me why we're in court today, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. So, I'm here today uh, to give James an ultimatum uh, to either step up and behave or he can get out. Uh, I'm just... I'm tired of him not providing. He's always got broken promises given to me, and I'm really, really tired of him cheating. And I'm done with it. I'm ready to take my two kids and get out. And, um, you know, at 27 years old, you have a lot of life to live. Mm hmm And so, at some point, you have to make a determination what's good for you and what's good for your children. Right. I agree. Yep. Mr. Spurgeon, you heard what Ms. Janik says. What do you say, sir? I'm here today just to uh, try and make my family work, and um, I really just want her to be able to admit when she's wrong as well. So, you see that there are problems on both sides, and you think that you need the two of you to stand in accountability and be able to move forward if this relationship's gonna work. Yes, Your Honor. Let me go on back to Ms. Janik. Ms. Janik, why don't you take me back to how you all met and what actually brought us to court today? Yeah, um, so we met through my best friend, uh, Mr. Spurgeon and I, and that is how we met. Our anniversary actually is uh, on 420, uh, April 20th. We're just a great young couple in love. But that was eight years ago, and at some point, ago, everybody right. got to grow up now. Yeah, and that's what I'm just tired. I got tired of being tired, and I'm just ready for him to grow up and get stuff together, or like I said, I'm going to take my two kids and we're going to go. Yes. I'm going to move on. Okay, and Mrs. Spurgeon, I turn to you. You all met and you all were casual and hanging and having a good time as two young people. I understand that six months in, Miss Janet became pregnant and all of a sudden you all were now focused on a family. Is that correct, sir? Yes, Your Honor. How was the beginning of the relationship? The beginning was good and fun and everything. And, um, and then, yeah, we found out she was pregnant about six, seven months in. And then it kind of just made the relationship a lot more stressful and stuff. And then the problem all started when the second baby, she was pregnant with the second child and everything. And that's when everything just started going downhill. And I think just, you know, the first child being so young and everything, it, it just had all the extra stress put on us and everything. And then the new one coming in, and we just didn't know what to do, I guess. And we just kept taking it out on each other. Y'all never heard of birth control and protection? I mean, we have... We actually, we practice it now, so... That's because you don't want a third <laughs> baby, OK? Correct. I know for you, Miss Janet, one of the biggest issues has to do with broken promises. That's what's made you so tired in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. um, so, I cannot stand when my bills are late, if mm -hmm. I'm even late for work. I mean, it's any kind of, like, time that I have to do something or be somewhere something's due. I'm I... like that. I'm Polly Planner. That's yeah. what everybody yeah. calls me. It's annoying <laughs> to some people. I just right. saw Robert give me the lie. <laughs> it is very much annoying, but I like to plan. I don't like to be late. Right. Agreed. Okay. Yeah, and you have to have it then. So, um, there was, you know, a few times that we had our bills due and I don't have the money. I like to make sure, you know, he would always tell me, don't worry, I'm gonna have it, don't worry, I'm gonna have it. So, he, you know, the day comes and we're arguing, I'm stressed out about it, I'm anxious, you know, I'm, I'm just telling him, you know, we need to get this bill paid. I don't know how I get this money, you know, you keep telling me, you know, I'm gonna use this money, don't worry, and making me worry. So, you know, he has a friend over a lot, and his friend is hearing us argue about this, and he tells me, hey, I have this money for you. Pay your bills, you know, it's 200-something dollars. He has exactly what I needed. 
And I told him, like, no, I can't. I'm not going to accept this. Please, you know, I heard you guys arguing. I don't want to see you stressed. You're a mother. Like, just take the money, pay your bills. And I said, OK. So I take the money, and, you know, I'm trying. You know, I'm, I'm nervous because I, you know, I have to hide something from him You now. already know that it's going to be a problem. Right. So. I have the money and, you know, I go the next day to pay it. He, James ends up finding the money and, and he said, oh, what's that? And he had, you know, previously misplaced some money and thought that that was it. And I panicked and I didn't say anything at that moment. And he ended up spending the money, not on the bills. So then, you know, the guy comes over, do you pay the bills? And I said, no, this is what happened. And he starts freaking out and it actually ended up in a physical fight between them. <laughs> But it ends up in a, phys mm. a physical fight between them two. And then I, you know, my bills still aren't paid. And I'm, you know, now I have to worry about their physical fighting and my bills still aren't paid. And it's just. My heart is breaking. Yeah, but you know, the only reason I was even upset about that money is because you shouldn't be asking another guy for any type of money whatsoever. I didn't ask or even for accepting it. it in any type of way when I'm the man of the house and I always tell you that we're going to make it work. And we always did make it work. Mr. Spurgeon? Every single time, yes. The, you found out by happenstance? Yes, <laughs> just happened to find out. And no, it even would have been a different story had she came to me after the fact. And Here's said my something. question. But On you... that day that you found out, yes. let's say it was the 31st, did you have the 200 and some dollars in your pocket? No. So the bill was not going to get paid on that day Correct. if she didn't have the money? Well, I mean, it would have worked. We always made it work every other time. How was so... it going to work? What was your plan? I it just. It kind of happens. I don't know. Just the money comes and goes. So, I mean, it just happens. We always made it work. We always will. So... So, my question is, what was your plan as the man of that house? I mean, I always worked. It's just always under the table, usually, and stuff. So, you know. what were you planning on doing? I mean, doing? it was going to be paid. It was just going to be late. That was the only thing. So, you were planning yeah, on paying it, it late? Yeah, the day it was due. That was all. When we argue lately, it's just he always brings up that he has a feeling that the, our daughter might not be his. And he always got to throw that up in a fight. She's admitted to at least one person. I've heard rumors of others, including a friend of mine who claims that her and his significant other had a threesome with her and stuff. So, you think you have actual reason to believe that the baby's not yours? Yes, Your Honor. So, when the money was not paid on the bills, he spent the money on something else? So, yeah. The money just disappeared. But, you know, being the man yeah. of the house, though, she shouldn't be taking money from another guy. And if... Had I known it was from another guy, it wouldn't have just disappeared. Okay, well, I can tell you right now, Mr. Spurgeon, and I want you to take this exactly the way it's coming out. You don't demand to be the man of the house. You command. Being the man of the house. And the only way you command being the man of the house is to be the daggone man of the house. You need to walk up in the house with the 200 and something dollars. You need to tell your woman that this is how we're doing it. You need to say, I've taken extra shifts. You need to deliver food, pick up food, flip a burger, do whatever the heck you have to do so that this woman doesn't feel desperate enough to have to take some money under the table from one of your friends who probably was being sleazy and seeing what kind of good lady she exactly is and trying to hit it with her. And yes, he slid right in there and said, baby, let me show you what a man does. You let another man do that. That's not on her. You did. You let another man beat your time because he commanded attention. Didn't do what a little boy does, which is demand attention. That's the difference. I mean, I guess that's why I'm still here with her, though, not him. Well, I don't know how long that's going to be. Because it just seems like you two young people I, should be happier. It's just ever since the second kid, you know, it's just been kind of rough and I don't why? know. Why? Why, Mr. Spurgeon? Why do you I feel know. that way? I just feel so extra stressed, I guess, and stuff. And more of a need to get stuff right and do everything right the second time around. What happened in I mean, between the first and the second child? He always throws this thing out when we have arguments with the second kid. And this is where I had that... My final straw, I just... I've had enough of it. When we argue lately, it's just... He always brings up that he has a feeling that the, our daughter might not be his. And he always got to throw that up in a fight when just any kind of argument we have, he just starts bringing it up that, you know, I know she's not mine, and I just... Why do I you think that, Mr. Spurgeon? I mean, she's admitted to... 
I guess not cheating on me per se. We were on a break or whatever, but um, she's admitted to at least one person. I've heard rumors <laughs> of others, including a friend of mine who claims that her and his significant other had a threesome with her and stuff. And then... Really? This is somebody that you know? Yes. I don't really associate with them anymore, that but yes. That is a lie. I've and never had a threesome. Just, yeah, yeah. She admits to one, so who knows how many more there actually are. And so this person know. that told you this, is it somebody reliable? Or I is mean, it somebody that known... was just starting crap? No, someone I've known for a while. I wouldn't expect them to just do that to start crap or anything. So you think you have actual reason to believe that the baby's not yours? Yes, Your Honor. I'm a million percent sure that this baby is his. You have submitted Mr. Spurgeon and the baby for DNA analysis. I would like the results. I know she's your little girl. I mean, it's... When it comes to two-year-old Leona Colette Spurgeon, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Spurgeon, If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Well, you know, I have to tell you this. From Mr. Spurgeon's perspective, mm -hmm. he said that there has been one admitted, quote, infidelity... Mm -hmm. during the time that you all were on a so-called break. Am I correct? Just with the facts. Yes. Correct, yeah. We were on a break, and I did... I was with someone during that break, but I know that it's not... I mean, I even... How I... soon after the break was the baby born? I, I, right after the break is when... During it is when we found out she was pregnant, actually. During so... the break? Yes. Were you all still having intimate yes, relations? Yes, we were still doing everything. I thought we were trying to make stuff work, being a break. You know, I thought we were still trying to work towards... Us and family also doesn't think the child is mine for some reason, and... I understand the two of you want to resolve this one way or the other today. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you have submitted um, yourself, Mr. Spurgeon, and the baby for DNA analysis, correct? Yes. Robert, will you retrieve the results from me, please? Sure. You know, and, like, I do love my daughter very much. I would do anything for her. No matter what about these results, you know, she's still always going to be my daughter and everything. You know, I love her and I would yeah. do anything for her. But it's just, I really want to know if the blood, you know, I want to know if I'm actually the father or not. And So, I'm, I'm curious, because I love that you said that she's always going to be your little girl. Yes. Are you prepared for this? Because if you feel that way... No, no, I'm... Do I need to open this? Because if that's your I baby, that's you, your baby. No, you don't need to open it, honestly. I mean, there's two ways we can look at it, because I do need DNA results one way or another, because I'm not on her birth certificate. They will not let me sign it when she was born because of COVID and everything. And I do have doubts. I do just want to know the truth about, like, if she actually is mine or not. So, like, I do, yes, I would like you to open it. I would like the results. I know she's your little girl. I mean, it's... No matter what, she's still going to be my little girl always, but... The results do... are necessary. When it comes to two-year-old Leona Colette Spurgeon, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Spurgeon, you are not her father. Oh, man. That's all right. Uh, She's still This a is girl. from our DNA diagnostic lab, and... There is a zero combined paternity index, and the probability of paternity is zero. I mean, that's all right. She's still my little girl, and she's always going to be that. <laughs> honestly, that paper is really just for the court, so we could take it up there, and I can get on her birth certificate. That's... I, that paper doesn't mean anything. <laughs> she's still my little girl, and always will be. My heart breaks. I right told now. you it was only for the birth certificate that's all I need it for. <laughs> Mrs. Spurgeon, you're standing up there and you're pretending like this is not breaking not your heart. I mean, it's always... Breaking. You're right. pretending that it's not breaking your heart and it is breaking your heart and I could see it. And I, I have to tell you, I admire what just came out of your mouth, that she's always going to be your little girl because she deserves the father that she loves. She is not involved in any of this. No, it's not her problem. She has nothing to do with it. She only deserves to be happy, so I'm going to give her that still. Miss Janet, okay. I warned you, there's only one way that you are a thousand percent sure <laughs> is if you don't lie down with somebody else. Thank you. <laughs> and although you both agreed that you were on this 
break. <laughs> I don't believe in breaks in real relationships. Me neither. I believe that when you're having difficulty in a real relationship, <laughs> you go to your respective corners, try to gather yourself, and then you come back together. But while you're in those respective corners, nobody else should be there with you. Right. Like I said, she's always gonna be my daughter. This changes nothing about that at all. How does it make you feel about Miss Janet, though? I mean, she came out and told me what it was from the get-go. I don't... I haven't lost any respect or nothing for her, you know. I knew what it could be and what the possibilities were when I came here and got the test and everything, so it doesn't make me change the way I feel about her or anything at all. It's just good to know the truth. That's really... That's it. Ms. Janet, you know you're the one who brought this case. And, um, you know, as I opened the case, um, you said that you wanted to stop feeling betrayed and feeling alone in the relationship and you were ready to take your two children and move on with your life. But before me stands a man who says he's still ready to accept you in his life with your two children that he considers his two children. Something tells me you might have something to say to him. Yeah, I mean, I do... I do still need you to step up and help. It would... You know, I need someone that I can rely on and help me provide... Ms. Janik, before you start saying what you need, how about you say I'm sorry? Yes. I am very, very deeply sorry. It's all right. It changes nothing. Thank you. So, Ms. Janet, you're gonna need to do some repairing because although Mr. Spurgeon says he has no different feeling, I do believe when it comes to his baby girl, that's gonna be his baby girl. That's always my baby girl, no matter what. I believe what. that because I do appreciate what you have just said, sir. But I don't know if he is going to trust you the same way. So that means you're gonna have to do some work, young lady. And not only is he gonna need to step up for you, you're gonna need to step up to rebuild trust. You can't always be critical of what's going on with him when you yourself have violated the trust. So you're gonna need to do some big girl work yourself. As I like to say, put on your big girl panties because now the tough stuff comes in. Miss Janik, I know this is a very emotional time. Mm -hmm. Do you want this relationship with Mr. Spurgeon? I do. I want the relationship, yeah. I just, like I said, I just want him to actually step up and, and I don't mean for that to be one-sided. I really don't. Like, I, I understand I need to... to step up, too, in different ways, but... I'd love to offer the assistance of the court, someone to help you navigate these next few days and maybe weeks, because I think you might need somebody to help you deal with the fallout from this. Because although we stand here together today, um, the realization will manifest itself. Right. And the only way this relationship will continue, Mr. Spurgeon, is if you don't throw that in her face... Yes. ...at all times. The baby has to be... It's my part baby, of the regardless, family. yes. Mm -hmm. And, Miss Janet, Thank I you. think you need to manage your expectations. Because at least from where I sit, he's trying. Because I don't know very many men that would have reacted with the dignity that he has today. Mr. Spurgeon, thank you very much. Ms. Janik, you got some splaining to do today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. At least we can get some help and get past all of it now, finally, and we know the truth. Yeah. yeah I'm really, really sorry, though. That's all right, I promise. In a million years, mm. I will never understand why anybody comes to divorce court knowing that you might have had a baby by another person other than your partner. She said a thousand percent, until you did step out for that one second. That one second, with no protection? Mm -hmm. Exhibit A. That's right. Made in Georgia.